Lovely. So this is a foundation paper from 2017. So I'm going to try and be as quick as I can through this. There's a formula sheet. And the first question is all about waves. So it's asking for the wavelength. So the wavelength stops there, 1.6. You can see that there's two waves at 3.2 there. Amplitude is the maximum displacement. So it's either going to be 0 0.5 or 0 point, uh, minus 0 0.5 because that's the, the maximum displacement there. If there's 10 waves in two seconds, how many per second? Well, that's gonna be five, and a simple calculation will show that, but you don't have to show the calculation for the mark. And then we're gonna use the formula V equals uh, lambda, which is wavelength times frequency to get our wave speed. So wave speed is 1.6 is your um, wavelength from there, and then your frequency from there. Now they will give you marks if you get these wrong. Um, you can carry on marks per there, but the correct answer is eight meter, uh, centimeters per second. Continued on to the next page then for two marks here, you're gonna have to give the lines that, that so they're parallel, sorry, at right angles to this line and approximately the same distance between wave fronts. So if you think each line is like the top of a wave looking down on it, um, that's what they're looking for for two marks there. On to the next question then, which is all about the EM spectrum. So our uh, two marks come from microwaves, infrared and x-rays. Red Martians invade Venus using x-ray guns is a quick way to remember that. And a nice two marks here for telling uh, the examiner that transverse waves, are vi their vibrations move at right angles to the direction of travel. Um, we've got this tick box exercise and it's worth two marks. You're going to have two correct ticks somewhere. So don't put more than two ticks if it's worth two marks. Often these come up for three marks and they're expecting three ticks then, but for two, give two. Uh, these are your two correct answers because uh, this is wrong. Uh, this is wrong and this is wrong. Radio waves um, have the smallest wavelength. They have the biggest wavelength. Uh, all EM waves have different frequencies, with rad um, radio being the lowest frequency and gamma being the highest frequency. And then uh, only radio waves transmit, every uh, EM wave transmits information. Do I agree with a student saying that uh, radio is just as harmful as gamma? No, I don't, because gamma uh, is way more um, ionizing because it's got a higher energy, because it's got those, because um, it's got a higher frequency. Okay, we can say mutate cell as well for two marks there. Uh, so this question is on electric circuits, and this is a form of a six mark question that might come up. So they've given you the basic circuit there. You need to add a voltmeter in parallel and an ammeter in series. And then for three marks, give a brief method. So we're going to set the VR, which stands for variable resistor, which is this fella by here, to maximum. What that does is allows no current to flow. So you're gonna get zero, zero current and voltage. Then you're gonna use the ammeter to measure the current and the voltmeter to measure the voltage. You're gonna get a mark for that. And then finally, you're gonna adjust the, the VR incrementally or to suit the voltage values of equal amounts. So you can either say adjust the VR equal, equal, incrementally to suit the voltage or adjust the VR to suit voltage but they must be equal amounts. What do I mean by that? Well, you can see that the voltage goes up in twos, but the current is measured against the voltage. So you can see that these are not as an, uh, the nice pattern. You're gonna graph that then for three marks, two marks for your plot in, one mark for the nice curve. Remember to do this in pencil, uh, just in case you get it wrong. That's the three marks you're gonna need. Right, calculate the resistance using this equation, voltage over current. Well, your voltage is on the bottom, your current's on the side. So I'm gonna use what they asked me for, for three volts. And then when I go up from three volts and bring it back, you can see my line's not the best there. That's quite a bad line, but I, I've said that's around about 0 0.62. There is gonna be room uh, for a range of uh, answers by year, but 4.8 is what you get for resistance if you put it over 0 0.62. And then uh, another student concludes that resistance of the lamp increases as the voltage increases. Well, let's check check that. I'm gonna increase the voltage from three to four, okay? And then I'm gonna find out what the current was when it was four. Easy way to do that is to just to look at my table. So at four, it was 0 0.76. So if I bring it back over here, you can see that I've stuck four over 0 0.76 to give me 
a resistance of 5.2. 5.2 is bigger than 4.8, so I reckon this student is right. So I agree. Uh, let's have a look at this one then. This is all about uh, energy sources of energy. So coal fire power station is going to give a lot of CO2 emissions. Your wind farm is not very re uh, reliable, so it's unreliable. And then nuclear power stations, this high decommissioning cost means that it's going to cost a lot of money to take that power station down to get rid of it because it's going to be full of radioactive activity, okay? If that's even a word there. It's going to be full of, you know, not nice things. Um, what's this? Cost of it. So this one, at first you'd be thinking, I need to get that mega joules into just a joule, but... Actually, because it's an efficiency question, you can leave it in megajoules because the numbers correspond to each other. If this was in joules and that wasn't, then you'd have to convert one of them. But since we're okay and they're both in megajoules, we can just put 8, which is your useful, says there, over 20, which is your total, times 100, gives you 40%. Then suggested that uh, this is more efficient. Well, I disagree because they're both 40% efficient. So... Nobody wins there. Uh, continue on the question. I think these are nice questions. So you've got state one advantage of the reli uh, national grid, which is reliable. Um, if one breaks down, you can use another one. If there's high demand, then you can source electricity in from another power station. Any one of those for one mark. Uh, which uh, transformer is the step up? So you can see the power station starts by here and it goes around this way. So the highest the voltage is, is 400 kilovolts there, and then it's always stepped down from there on. So the step up transformer must be A. And what does it do? It increases the voltage to reduce the current. And that means less current, uh, there's less energy lost as heat, because high current uh, will lose a lot of energy as heat. The six mark question then is asking you what you really know about heat transfer. And there's three forms of heat transfer, convection, conduction, and radiation. So I've talked about first, and if you read the question, they're asking you how this window prevents the heat loss. So we're talking about the reflective coating first. Well, a good reflector is a poor emitter of heat, so that's going to reduce heat loss via radiation. Your white plastic, again, the same sort of thing. Because it's white, it's a good reflector, so it's going to reduce heat loss via radiation. But because it's plastic, plastic is a poor conductor of heat, but it's a really good insulator, which means there's less heat loss via conduction. So those particles are not vibrating as much as they would in a metal. And don't forget the metal's got free electrons to pass that electricity and heat energy along as well. Vacuum then, well, if you've got a vacuum, it means that you take the particles out of that space. So in this case, because conduction and convection need particles to transfer heat, you're gonna prevent heat loss via conduction and convection because there are no particles. This question is continued then with the payback time. You're not given this equation, so we're going to have to find a way to remember payback time equals cost over saving. Uh, it is just a bit of a numeracy uh, skill where you're going to see how many times 8D goes into 4,000 to get your payback time, which is 50 years. Why isn't this uh, always going to be the case? Why might it change? Because the cost of electricity might change and the units that you use, the energy that you use per year might change as well. So two marks, one for each one of those. Then we've got a little bit of information, which you don't really need apart from, well, uh, talks about 40% less, which comes on to the next question, which is a bit of a stinker, really. We'll talk about that. But for four marks here, and four marks will uh, always let you know that more than one equation needs to be used. Now, on the front of the page, you've got these two equations in the same box. In fact, it might be worth me just showing you this equation. You can see that the two are wrapped up in one. So the units used, and it makes an effort to give you kilowatt hours. So it's not just, um, we're not just in watts and seconds here. We're on about kilowatts and hours. And then you've got this other one. Once you found out the units used, you can use that to calculate the cost. And that's exactly what we're going to do in that question. So in this question down here, we've got the units used, which is kilowatt hours, equals your power, which is 500. But that's what, so we have to convert that. Be smart, mate, stop being dumb, because I'm going from small, which is a watt, to big, which is a kilowatt, I need to divide by a thousand. So 500 divided by a thousand is 0 0.5, times 
90 minutes is equivalent to one and a half hours, 1.5 hours. Don't forget we're in hours now. That gives me 0.75 units used. Now that I know that, that's probably two marks, I can use this equation, cost equals units used times cost per unit. So I replace my units used for 0.75, replace my cost per unit with 16 pence. That's going to come out to 12 pence. Four marks there. Now then, this one is all about recognising that we've got factors really of thirds. So, um, so 90, if you think the, the common... Uh, the common denominator, I guess you could say, is 30s here. So if we reduce it by 30, that's 33% less. And they, re and they reckon it's 40%, at least 40%. So that's wrong. And then we can also see the other way. It uses 50% less energy at 50. Because it's used, it takes longer. It takes 30 minutes longer. This is a tough question. There's other ways to work it out. But I'm going to leave that one because I do think... For the time spent on this, for three marks, it's okay. And I, I think I, I go through this uh, in another video anyway. But once you start thinking about that 30 minutes, I, I just don't want to make this video too long and spend ages on this. But there is a pattern, and you'll see that it's not 40%, it's 33%. Um, same part of the question then. These questions come up all the time. Wash your clothes at 30 degrees, saves money on bills. How is it good for the environment? Well, less energy equals less CO2 emissions. So less work done by the power station. Therefore, less CO2 emissions equals less contribution towards global warming. So everyone's happy. You've got this ring main circuit then. And it doesn't ask you a lot on this one. It even... Uh, so they say which one a fuse must be connected to. Live is always live. And then describe the function of the earth wire. If a fault develops, it will take current safely to the ground. And then the last question is this one. So uh, for three marks, we're only going to use one equation here. So we've got to find out. So they use a three amp fuse. And we've got to see if that's okay. Because at maximum power, there's 2,400 uh, 2, watts. So let's have a look here. So I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use that fuse value for current, three amps. And I'm going to times that by the volts, which is 230 volts. And it comes out 690. Now, it says there that it's maximum running at 2,400 uh, volts. So this fuse is not going to be good enough. So fuse is not suitable since it's lower than 2,400. It's not asking you which fuse you should use. So therefore, because that would, that would mean you'd have to work that out. I should imagine it's something like a 13 amp fuse. And you could 13 times... 230 is going to tell you then what the maximum wattage is, what the maximum power. And that's the end of that paper. Hopefully you've got something from that.